I've sold 20 watches to get this one. Grail achieved. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today, I get to review a watch I knew I'd own at some stage. I just didn't know when. Now, recently, I have been on an almighty purge. After doing my State of the Collection show at the start of this year, I realised I had way too many watches. Anyway, congratulations to anyone that bought a bargain off me in the last two, three weeks. The reason why they were in the collection in the first place was because I absolutely loved them. Well, a couple of years ago, I reviewed three watches from the same brand. This particular brand was founded in 1889 and in 1967 released an absolute icon at Baselworld because it was the first professional grade diver's watch available to the public. And we are of course talking about the Doxa 300. Look at this orange beast. Now, yes, Doxa has changed hands over the years, but in recent times, they've really done an excellent job bringing back the Doxa name to the legend status it needs to be. In that review two years ago, I handled the 300, I handled the 300T, and the 600T. My conclusion was I wanted that original watch, the 300 sub. Well, lo and behold, and a big thanks to Ryan at Francis and Gay, I got one! So anyway, we'll unbox this beauty, give it the old MWC once over, and at the end, we'll see what the wife thinks about it. Not good! Are you a doxo ready? Let's go! So when you buy the watch, you first get this outer box. Open that up and we get a lovely little zippy box. Anyway, open her up and there she blows. Orange loveliness. Now, yes, first impressions, you're going to think that is blingy. Yes. Yes, it is. But this is how the watch came in 1967. It's that tonneau style case that I absolutely love. Innovative Doxa bezel, decent chunky crown, awesome domed sapphire crystal. And yeah, this thing does absolutely scream the 60s for me. And yes, being the old hypocrite we are as watch enthusiasts, I don't really like beads of rice bracelets, but on this Doxa, I do. Bite me. Now I know something that puts off a lot of people straight away is the big gigantic minute hand and the itty bitty hour hand. Now this was done by design. Divers are not going to track the hours. The main hand they use is obviously the minute hand. But this is another one of those quirks that I really love in this watch. And first impressions, I got what I ordered. Quick spec check. Okay, so the case is bigger than I would normally go for in a watch in 42.5 millimeters, but the combination of 45 millimeters lug to lug and the small circumference of the dial, this watch definitely looks smaller than it is. Last Last but not least, we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. The dial is protected by a box sapphire crystal. And what a box. I love to see distortion on a watch. Just gives me that warm, tingly 60s vibes, you know? Not easy to do with sapphire. You pay a premium. We've got a great size crown that's recessed into this tonneau case with the little iconic Doxa fish logo. It's screw in. And with the case back being screw in also, this watch is water resistant to 300 meters. The bezel is very unique to Doxa, and that's what I love about this watch. There are certain traits, characteristics that make it a Doxa. It's a 120 click unidirectional bezel, stainless steel with those two finishings on the face. The inner part of the bezel is your elapsed time. The outer part is your decompression measurements in feet, something that no other watch company did. Yes, so very efficient, great little clicks to it. The grip is quite thin, so it's not a great fit feeling on your fingers and the ratcheting doesn't come close to a Black Bay 58 but it feels like a tool you know have a listen all good no back play and a bezel like no other <laughs> So onto the bracelet, and you have to say it is very well made. Seven links in total, the beads of rice are polished, and the two outer links are brushed. The links are solid, and they are held together with screw pins. Very easy to adjust. The slight letdown, however, for me, is when it comes to the clasp. We've got a fold over security, and then it's just a pull out clasp. I remember thinking this last time, that with the 300T, that clasp had the double deployant. Also, it had an on the fly extension. So pull it out and you get this, I don't know, it's like 
10 mil. In all honesty, it is quite crude, especially for 2024 and for the price tag you gotta pay. Okay, let's look at the face. Dial time. So everything is printed on this dial from the Doxa Automatic to the Sub 300 Professional. And you know what? It would look weird if this dial did have applied markers. There's a lot going on around the dial and I think it would just be too much. I have never seen loom painted plots with black block frames either side. Again, synonymous with a Doxa dive watch. Something that sticks out a little bit like a sore thumb to me, the date window. I do like the frame and that little loom pip with the needle that comes out. But for a true dive watch, do we need a date? Is there any diver out there that looks at a date when they're underwater? Why would you do that? When would you do that? To me, probably back in the 60s, Doxa used a movement that had a date complication and so put a date window there. Now on this dial, not only the colour, but the hands are a big put off to many of you out there. But it is the perfect colour that contrasts against the orange dial when you're deep underwater. Now I will never go 10 meters underwater. I will definitely swim with it and try to check the time out with my goggles on. But for me, it's great to own a watch that is definitely capable, you know? A proper tool. And apart from the date, I love that dial. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Now, two years ago, the Loom score got a pretty poor five out of 10. I feel like that this one is a little bit better. It definitely looks a different color than the one I reviewed back then. But still, for a modern day dive watch, it's not that glowy, is it? But we've got to remember that underwater, it's that dial color contrasting against the black handset. That's where the legibility comes from, not just the Loom. <laughs> Okay, another contentious part to this watch is the movement. Now, inside this beast, we have an ETA 2824. Effectively, an off-the-shelf ETA movement smacked into the back of this watch. Now, listen, it is COSC certified, but for a watch company that has, in essence, been around since the 1800s, to not have a watch with an in-house movement, I mean, Gould and Bennett, even Panerai do their own in-house movements. Now, to be fair, it be an ETA, this watch is gonna run and run and run, purrs away at 28,800 beats per hour, 38 hours of power reserve, and you're gonna be able to service this or get it mended at any decent watchmaker worth their salt. This movement hacks and hand winds, and overall the operating experience is lovely. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist, and I absolutely love this thing. Guess I love it even more because it is mine now. I got the chance to resize the bracelet, which was brilliant. It may be 13.3 millimeters in thickness, but it certainly doesn't look it on your wrist. You gotta remember some of that thickness is to do with that huge box dome crystal. And even though the watch is 42 and a half millimeters in diameter, that 45 lug to lug means it definitely wears well on me and is definitely gonna wear well on you. Now, I've been wearing this for a couple of weeks now and I gotta say it gives me enormous pride in wearing it. This is a watch enthusiast watch, a dive watch enthusiast watch. Generic divers come and go and have been and gone. This 300 sub professional fits in with my collection perfectly in terms of brand history, storytelling, specifications. It's not an obvious choice for a watch enthusiast, even less obvious for a non-watch enthusiast. Oh, it's orange. But it looks damn good on me. <laughs> so there we go. Grail achieved. The Doxa 300 Sub Professional is on my wrist. It's been resized and it's mine. But what do you honestly think about this watch? A lot of you are going to have trouble with the price. It's well over £2,000. And I think if I didn't have the little discount that Francis and Gay gave me, it would have been a harder decision to make. I have no regrets putting up the cash for this bad boy. Let me tell you that. Yes, the clasp is a bit rubbish. But listen, it is what it is. You don't like it, you don't buy it. I'm going to take this Doxa 300 on so many family adventures, shove a load of great memories on top of it, and really see if I can bang this up. This watch feels like it needs to have a scratch or two on it. Uh, just not quite yet. So here is my wife's thoughts on the brand new Doxa 300 Sub Professional. <laughs> it's orange. I don't like it. Very blingy, hate the strap, looks like an old man's watch. Ooh, well, 
I guess I'll tell her the price later, shall I? <laughs> Thank you once again to Ryan at Francis and Gay Jewelers. You've got a happy customer. In the description below is their website. Get on there because they do loads of great watches. You don't all have to be in the Doctor Club. Thank you also for watching till the end. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector, click there and join. Want some merch? You know you do. Click there below somewhere. Oh, dropped it. Click down there. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you click this beast? This is a phenomenal show. Yes, one of my best on that day. Go on, go on, click it. You know you want to. Click, click, click it.